I decided to build this project in full stack Go and I started prompting away with cursor. I managed to get from uh, the starting point of nothing to the starting point of having a working application like you can see on the screen here. Um, and I say working application with a grain of salt. Where did things, where were things good and where did things start going wrong? So with cursor, I managed to get boilerplate. So a lot of the initial, if we jump to something like main.go, initial boilerplate, like uh, passing in environment variables, um, setting up things like your logo and just some basic stuff that you would normally have anyway. I'm an experience engineer, so I could get that stuff in quickly, but I managed to get that stuff in, of course, a lot quicker. Uh, migrations and things like database schemas, another thing that were all, all things that just, you know, I saw an output with, with and I went from having no schema to having schema and I went from having um, no, I could use the schema from SQL to generate go types with AI, just give it a prompt, go and do that. So everything was looking great. I got to the point where a brand could sign up with Google and again, all from prompting. Uh, and you could manage your profile, you could manage your listings and stuff. And I got you know, a, a very good way through the project until the code started growing. And this is where, as a solo engineer trying to build a project, so just you working on it, you think, you, you assume you know how things are working uh, when actually AI can take a completely different pathway that you'll go and look at that code after a while and you'll realize actually I would have done this differently things like stripe that is took examples of it's obviously been trained on very generic ways of doing like a stripe webhook but actually the performant way of doing a stripe webhook is very different to like example code that stripe may provide you so I had lots of issues of stripe integration etc for example some code like this I wouldn't have probably had like a fine listens with filter method I have my own um kind of patterns I follow as a software engineer uh, just things that I would do so when I then came to edit the the deals listings page uh, it just just like a little curveball right and all these little things add up um, so the vibe coding element started getting less fun the more issues I had to then go and work on and the more context is lost so I'm a back-end engineer I'm not necessarily a massive fan of writing CSS but let's jump and have a look at the CSS in this project. Now, this cost me a lot. Uh, so I essentially got a lot of the UI written purely based on prompts in this application. Um, and what happened was AI, again, really great at the start. Loads of CSS pumped in. I went from having just like a plain HTML web page to having a, a full, nice looking, responsive user interface, right? until I led to the CSS files. So essentially, AI would write your CSS and it would lose context of classes it wrote earlier on. And again, this could be down to bad prompting. It could be down to the fact that I didn't say split it up into files. And um, again, that's something I definitely could have done and maybe I wouldn't have been in the mess that I was. But you're just vibe coding essentially, right? You, you don't necessarily think about a lot of these things while you're building the product. Um, and if you can see here, this file is still 2,000 lines of CSS long. I spent, this was way over that, this was 3,000 lines of CSS, and I probably spent the best part of a day splitting up stuff again to try and get it more maintainable. So I've, I've actually en ended up creating all these component CSS files uh, to try and get some actual structure into it and remove duplicate classes. It became a very big mess and it became a big mess quickly. Uh, and that was, for me, trying to build a genuine product that I want to maintain and ship to production, which actually, it already is in production, um, became a bit of a nightmare. So the other thing for me, I think I kind of touched on it already a little bit, but I became so out of touch with certain areas of the code. So it got to the point where I would spend a lot of time refactoring so much code in this project. And actually, it wasn't until I started adding unit tests where things weren't quite working and uh, how I would how I would do something changed again. Um, and, you know, again, I got to such a good point in the project. It felt great. The more I looked into it, the worse it got, essentially. Um, another really important factor to bring into this conversation on AI and vibe coding, unless you're explicitly asking for performance as a concern and security issues as a concern it won't necessarily take that into your prompt into your application 
And before you know it, you're going to have certain security vulnerabilities or even just performance issues that you wouldn't even have thought of in the first place. Now, if we go look over and look at my commit history, uh, myself and another engineer uh, that's a very good engineer has been looking at this code and has also noticed a lot of kind of incomplete features that AI had started doing. Um, so you can see some of my commits now that I've, I've refactored how I serve the assets in the project to use more a more performant way of doing that with things like inbuilt caching. And if you're an experienced engineer, you probably would have already known, and I maybe would have noticed this myself if I was actually coding it manually, that that was a better method to use than how AI had done it. Um, there's certain security features of using this, this method, for example, Go and other benefits. And this was the same in a lot of cases. Um, for example, if you're going to build like a, a big application that wants to scale, uh, Cursor decided, okay, let's just go and put strings straight in the database and not use IDs, right? So like statuses would have status active, whereas obviously it's in, a, in a larger application that's going to scale more, a, an integer like, a, um, a number, an ID for an item is obviously better to store than just a status active. So you'd have status ID active, right? Um, so th those very tiny little things, and uh, again, small bits like that add up a lot across your application. So it would take a hit on performance, uh, maintainability, and again, you'll have security concerns. So where am I today with this application? Well, I'm glad I tried out Cursor. It was a good and fun experience. And again, it was great seeing progress quick. Now I'm actually trying to release this thing and make sure things are robust. Uh, I am now uh, stepping away from Cursor. And as you've probably seen here, I'm actually back into NeoVim. Uh, I do have Copilot that I use, which I think is a lot easier to kind of keep an eye on and you can just not use suggestions it's only going to, only going to suggest a few lines at a time it's easy to keep an eye on but i'm not prompt engineering and don't get me wrong it, there's certain cases where i would still write a prompt maybe uh using chat gpt or grok or something like for example this slice of creative categories if i wanted constants for each one of these so an actual constant I wouldn't want to manually type out all of that when I know that I could pass this slice to uh, GPT and it would spit out a list of constants quickly and I could just paste that into my editor. Uh, but what I found over the last two weeks of not prompt engineering is everything I've written has worked how I expected. Uh, I've cared more about security. I'm more in touch with my code. I know what things are working and what things aren't working. I know how things are like in general working, the underlying interfaces and just uh, approaches to that code uh, and I would say since I've stopped vibe coding that the application in general has just become a lot more robust once I have a lot of test coverage in this application and a lot of existing code written I might go back to cursor and give it a go again in terms of I know I've got tests so I know if it breaks anything I will get errors and tests will fail uh, and also um, I'll have so much more code in my project that it will be able to follow the existing structures a lot better. So I'll definitely give it a go uh, after I've kind of got more code and test coverage in this application. Um, but my takeaway from now is while I'm trying to get this application live, I am back to using NeoVim, not prompt engineering. Hopefully, if you're looking to vibe code or build an application in general, this video has given you some type of insight into why you should why you shouldn't and things to look out for. Um, if that is the case, please drop a like on this video and uh, comment and I will see you all in the next video.